Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to the channel. Yes, I'm getting better each and every day. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to hit my high octicles, but we'll see each and every video we put out at the beginning. But yes, welcome to another segment of Why You Telling My Business. Don't be telling my business because I can't can and I can't can and I can't can and I will will and I can't can. Okay, it ain't all the way down. I know it, but hey, we try. Okay, getting into this video, you see who we're talking about, and it's going to be scandalous, and it's gonna be marvelous because I'm telling it to you all and all of us allegedly of course all right so good again happy holidays and welcome back to my channel but yes honey you know how they say you love one you hate the other you can't straddle the fence you know those old old wisdoms of nuggets that you're seasoned elderly people tell you okay to try to keep you out of trouble and try to keep you with a conscience so we got simon gabadia over there on his instagram account doing what he do best which is nothing because most mongoose um um heavy hitters um people that have money they don't have time to be on social media they hire people to make sure that their businesses is a one okay and they're doing well they don't sit out here and um post on instagram or any other social media accounts they hire people to do such things but it was just one thing i had uh ran across like i said <coughs> um i was all Tisa Tattles, okay, I, I wouldn't, not, cause I, you know, I don't really go look at these people's accounts unless people are just saying interesting, curious things, and I have to go and see and ascertain myself and pick, pick a peak, wait, pick a peak, wait a minute, pick a way at the pieces to draw my own conclusion of what I'm given, and reasoning and logic play a part in it, and then I bring it to y'all. Now, this man over here saying this in his post i'm not gonna read it all just the meat and potatoes that i had to get that i felt i needed to make a video on because this man ain't nothing but a sham a sham and a crime and a shame and need to be again put in the public opinion courtroom and sliced and diced until we found out that he's just not credible to be a part of such a family as Dennis McKinley and baby girl PJ. Okay. I believe Portia Williams is blindsided because of the ideal of her wanting to be a wealthy woman. Instead of doing what she was doing before. Before she met this man Simon G. Okay. Getting her own wealth making her own legacy and being a right to be a force to be reckoned with in whatever field she chose in the entertainment business but it seems like she wants to be all out loud and not under control uh out of control i guess we should say and she wants to use other people money so to me, you can see that as a killed woman, you can see that as a gold digger, you can see that as a woman who preys on other people money and advances. If that's the case, if Simon G is a millionaire slash billionaire, I haven't found the proof that really satisfy my intellect that says he is definitely doing it up big because it seems like Porsche spent about a couple of months maybe three at the tops trying to formalize this man in social media because I was just doing something just playing around on the keyboard and I just put his name in and just search for images and the only images I can find of this man is one that connects him to Fallon his ex-wife and Portia Williams his girlfriend there are no other pictures that can put me on a uh, Forbes 500 list. The top uh, black influential men in the world. Or, you know, anything that separate, separates himself from the entertainment business. As well as any women. I'm talking about, like, if I Google George Clooney, 
hell, you're going to see a lot of pictures of him, his movies, his accomplishments, and then you're going to see some of his wife, Alma. But, you know, if I do Denzel Washington, I'm going to come up with some stuff on Denzel. You know, of all his published works and accomplishments and, and things of that um, scenario. But, when I do Simon Gabaldia, it comes up with pictures of his present girlfriend and his uh, ex-wife. And I'm like, so what does that say about him? He don't have any accolades of his own that I can partake of and deduce, deduce, uh, deduct from my reasoning to what social media is giving us to what's actually pseudo or false. So I'm like, hmm. So he's almost like non-existent if he's not paired with those two women. Makes you wonder. But anyway, I said that to say this to go on into this article of um i don't know he just it seems like he just writes paragraphs like he's writing a letter or a paper for the professor to read and understand where he's going with his theory or trying to prove whatever he's saying in his writings okay but just this part is what got me he said i'm with my soulmate i'm i guess he's speaking of portia I'm starting a new life chapter, our new home, and the cars are a reminder that whatever I put my mind to, only God can stop me. So today, my collection of cars that were in storage while closing on our new home are now reunited with me. Welcome home, babes. Your new mommy is inside waiting on you all, living my mother effing best life. And I'm like, what? I'm trying to think of the word. Um, what successful? Because I couldn't think of a better word. Grounded businessman that's well groomed in who he is up as a person, who he is as a businessman, a family man, would say something like that. Okay, let's think about that. A well seasoned, groomed man in the business world who knows the business like the back of his hand. Very much so, a family man. And very wealthy. Would someone of that caliber talk like that? Post like that? I beg to differ. And what he gathers as success is cars, houses. I don't understand that. Most people don't value those things as well. Such as myself. We got to have the Lord first and foremost. Then we got to have my family, tried and true. And then we will have my employment, whether I'm an entrepreneur, whether I'm working for another person and their organization. Those are how the three things stack up in my life. Now, with a man who calls himself is centered by the Almighty, God. Um, but then I have to be fair because most people don't equate who your God is. Versus who their God is. So we're going to give him sort of a half point for that. Uh, because he may be right on point with the God that he served. The one that um, cares only about self. Self-indulgence. Getting idolatry type stuff. Worshipping idolatry type stuff. And that's pretty much it. That's the golden stamp of it all. So he may be serving his master. Which is a different master that I serve. Because the master that I serve. Try to love everybody. Try to help everybody. If they can. Financially, spiritually, and emotionally. But it seems like. He's not. Trying to. Um, be in a circle of where I am. So it seems like his circle is only for. Monetary gain. And that's what he deems as being a successful. Businessman. And I'm like, okay, all right, understanding it, got it good. So, it's a sad day, because you're trying to put Miss PJ in there. Baby girl PJ, full of love, life, vitality, you know. And she has to be around this young, this man right here. Okay. This man right here. This is what Portia is giving her daughter to be a part of every day. The drainingness. Uh, this man right here 
okay and how he treated his other kids which is kind of non-existent even in the pictures we did get a chance to see that Portia pasted together put together um made happen together as the perfect family um she's not in pictures with them with are all taking one massive picture together and look like everybody's enjoying themselves and everybody's happy it's just like scattered pieces you know here and there and then you may have one that come together but it just seems like they're still out of place when you look at them because you're looking for warmth you're looking for um emotional connection you're looking for happiness well that's what i look at when i'm uh looking at people's pictures to feel the love that's there and the only thing i still feel is coldness calculatedness and all that stuff when I'm seeing pictures of him, even when he's with his children, they seem uh, voided of love and affection. It's just like, come on, let's quick, quickly take this picture, smile, and let's keep it moving on to the next destination where we want to have another photography photo of us seemingly like we're a happy together made family. Because I'm like, instead of him saying, welcome home children. Meaning actually physically uh, bodied individuals, his children. They should have been running up to the house meeting their stepmom, Portia, or his girlfriend at the time. Because that's all she is. She is a uh, fixture on however he wants to see her, whenever he wants to see her. Okay, and I just didn't ever think Portia would be that type of a woman. And I just beg to differ, or I'm just plausibly thinking, Portia, did you mess with this man while you were taping? Because it seemed like y'all know each other. And it seemed like you looking at him like I know you real well. We just got down two weeks ago, or two days ago, or two minutes ago. You know what I'm saying? Portia, did you know this man? Were you dealing with this man prior to him and family getting a divorce? It's just very suspect and plausible that you could have done that. But yeah, I just find it very weird that he would say in his Instagram post that he was waiting for his babies to come home. And I'm talk thinking he's talking about his children. This freaking ego talking about his cause. I'm like, who worship cause that can be dented, crashed into, tow up? And have to be, what do you call it, destroyed and remade over. Who, I mean, I know Jesus is good. God is good. Because he destroyed the body and rose it back up on the third day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. But a mere man trying to call himself. Uh-uh. That's, that's just too, too much. That's a straight blasphemy and idolatry all day and every day. He talking about his babies, which is his cause, had to be restored, had to be stored somewhere else until he moved into his other house, and now he's bringing his babies home, and he's talking about his collection of cause. Okay, I don't understand. And then he's saying the mama is waiting there, uh, waiting to receive them as well. And I'm guessing he's talking about Portia. I'm like, this ain't no ma, no pop, no back heel, heel, Billy Days. With people calling people ma and pop. No, a pa. No, we're not living in those days. And Portia is giving you the whole cow with a whole, yeah, she giving you the whole, whole cow and milk without him being a missus. Now, how tacky and tasteless and dreadful is that? So that's why I know. We had that little sit down talk with Dennis and Dennis had said, could you tell Portia, I am bringing somebody over, you know, and, he, you know, he kind of missed out Lauren. He should have stepped with Lauren, too, but technically it shouldn't have even been there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they had to make the show and they had committed to being on the show. So they had to do what it make it do, but they didn't know it was going to be done to them that way. You see what I'm saying? So, he had to do what he had to do. And thank you, Jasmine Brand, for letting me use uh, that um, clip of a picture that you put your tag on. People go over there and definitely partake of her entertainment. Great vlogger. 
um, you it has a lot of great commentary over there, and let her entertain you as well. But see, this person, he just seems to me as a poster child for what luxury could be if you worked hard at it. He just seems to me as a commercial actor, um, and he gives you the illusion that if you do this, that, and the third, you can become all of this. Well, hell, don't our teachers tell us that in grammar school? If we work real hard, we study real hard, we can do whatever we want to do. But in reality, it's all about who you know, the connections you make, and what you're willing to do to be in that position. You see what I'm saying? It's always that bad apple somewhere or that serpent trying to tempt you. Because the only thing they got there is lust. They don't have a marriage. They don't have love. They have a lust for money, power, and greed, and position. Those two. Now, am I saying Dennis is a 100 okay person? No, he has his flaws just like everybody else. He has a lustful spirit in him, meaning he can't get it under control where he can be monogamous, meaning being with one woman. But prayer, supplication, discernment can change all of that. Portia can actually turn into something that's doable as a wife. Okay? For not Simon Gabadia, but Dennis. But they have to work on that. And they have to do it off TV. You know what I'm saying? So, it just is what it is right now. And we're only evaluating what they're giving us to see. But poor, she can't be playing the, the, the field like that. She can't be playing both men and think we're going to respect her and we're going to be okay with it. We ain't Diane. We ain't her grandmama. And we damn sure ain't Darlene, her aunt. Okay? We are reasonable, logical, down-to-earth, uncomplicated, uncompromised individuals who uses their sense and their education to think all the way around full circle look at it from different perspectives deduce it deduct it and then bring it up for more evaluation so you got people like me and my family members over here we don't just jump to no conclusions we look at all the evidence that's presented to us and we try it in the court of public opinion okay and we make it do what it do but that's all i had in this video guys i got tired of this man you know, I'll Google his name, and the only thing I'm seeing is Portia and Fallon come up. You know, and him films of uh, scenes of Portia's family values connecting them or the Real Housewives of Atlanta. But other than that, that's it. Stage scenes of him and his comings and goings. So, hey, maybe he is using Portia as a come up. Because they don't, from what I'm understanding, they don't recognize him too much over there in Nigeria. And I damn sure ain't never heard of him flossing the streets of Atlanta. And I've been here since I was born into this world. Okay. And I'm not a person that hides up under a rock. But, you know, I ain't going to say I float with the rich and famous either. But I be in certain areas where I definitely have seen them come through. You know, they like to be at Lenox Mall. They like to be at Perimeter Mall. Okay. And <coughs> other, you know nice restaurants around here in Atlanta in Buckhead. So it's just here what it is. Everybody and their grandmama looking like they moving here to Atlanta. And I'm like, did we have a sign or something posted up in the friendly sky saying come to Atlanta, we do it better? I don't understand. I really don't. It seemed like the influx of people started coming in 2011 when I started noticing the increase of cars the increase of people because i'm a very astute person and i observe a lot of things and a lot of people and their comments and goings if i'm interested you see what i'm saying but yeah i think portia is gonna be in a hell of a ride of her life for the negative if she don't um like cut ties with this young man and she has to do a lot of maturing herself um, because where it's going to come in at is a lot of confusion centered around baby girl PJ. Because do we really care about Portia and her comments and goings or how she gets down? Uh, no, we really don't. 
But when you put an innocent child in the midst and you have shown her to us, we kind of tend to get into the defense of the child and the child's well-being. Okay, because even in a court of law, you may be the best person since sliced bread and butter. Okay, from your peers or from your family members. But when you get in judged in front of your peers in the courtroom of different diversities, they only looking at what uh, the facts are. They don't care about this, that, and the third, what you did here, that, and the, no. They're going to look at the actions of what they've already heard and know of you. And, and they're going to be asking for you not to be prejudiced against them or biased in any way. Just try to look at what is presented to you in the forum today and make a good observation and judgment on that. And right now, Portia is suffering in that aspect because she went from everything being about her child and her building wealth for her and her child and being a well-rounded individual as a woman an entrepreneur and um hopefully being on the best um 100 black women or women in general are doing the darn thing out there in society you know what i'm saying kind of being like another oprah winfrey if you would say and I'm being very generous when I say that. But anyway. <sighs> yeah. Since she has no other talent that we really know of. And we know she can't hold. She's a background singer. We ain't gonna put her out there like she can sing, sing. We ain't gonna go there. But. She was all about that. And then it seems like. When she met this man. She felt like she had to run him up. Until she secured his attention. And she developed getting a ring from him. Which, again, she's just his girlfriend. He can pull out in any time he wants. Just like he pulled out on that house deal. And that white woman going around him looking for him. In the valleys, in the mountains, in the, uh, <laughs> the hills. Trying to get him to make it right on his, uh, his um, commitment to buying her property. Or at least get her the money back. You know, that she wasted. Well, he had said, uh, take the house off the market and here's the down payment. He need to make it right. So if he can't do all that, I'm like, uh-uh. What do you need this man for, Portia? What do you need him for, honey? Okay. So that's what, you know, got Portia in the hot seat and the hot water. And, you know, she wanted to make a show for if entertainment. But then she going to say this is her life. This is what her family is all about and this is how they get down and you know i ain't gonna say every family is not dysfunctional because i'm pretty sure everybody's functional everybody's family is dysfunctional in some way hell mine is you know what i'm saying we got a lot of different elements <laughs> in our family some comical and some questionable you know but we still try to love them try to talk to them and and and, and go on with them as much as we possibly can uh without having to put pause on somebody but it's just like you know pj is so young and y'all relationship is so new and it's just a lot of chaos going on and i could see dennis's and his mom gina's reservations about certain things because at least they are talking about it they are expressing their concerns in public and probably behind closed doors but Portia mama ain't saying shit so I understand the frustration. I understand them wanting to do what's best for PJ and themselves. You know, because grandparents have rights, like I said in my other video. Um, children have rights. And right now, they need to stop putting PJ on tape, on camera. They need to just give her a break, cut her out of all scenes, and let her be a child. This is something they wanted to participate in. They wanted to make their money through. Uh, it had nothing to do with her. And it's, she seems so unhappy. She seems frustrated. You know what I'm saying? And irritated. And I'm like, they need to do something. And I'm glad Dennis is stepping in and trying to make that happen. I'm pretty sure any judge that got any, uh, what do you call it? Any morals and ethicalness about themselves. And if they are... A mother or a father they should know the pressures of being taped and the time it infringes on a child of that age is uh 
mentality. They don't want to be bothered. They don't want to be told what to do. And you should not be trying to chastise them and make them do it. You know, that's what's frustrating me about the whole situation. So, that's all I got of this video, guys. That's all I got. And we will be discussing, um, I hopefully it's the last scene of Portia Family Values. Because, like I said, it's crashed and burning. Well, it, it, it's, uh, it's still in the, the tunnels of going down the ditch. It's in flight now. Going down. And I'm just waiting for it to crash and burn this last episode. I'm hoping. And, uh, you know, I ain't... I, ain't, I don't want her not to have a job, but I'm like, I don't want her to have no more uh, seasons of this particular mess. Because it doesn't matter, you know, Portia gives us commentary regardless whether she's on a show or not. Her and Needy, they just always out there doing something, saying something, or whatever. But this, I don't need to see no more. We don't need to see no more of her bringing down her family. Then her family be shown in a negative light. I mean, if you want to be shown in a negative light, cool, calm, and collect that. I get it. You all about that money. Okay? However it comes, whenever it comes. You down for the dollar. But do we have to see you make your family look like uncouth people, uncivilized people, uh, crazy people? Do we need to have you show that on TV portion? It's a lot of... Uh, other things that we can be shown, you know, like our businesses and things of that nature and how we can uh, strive uh, or ascribe to be, you know, better individuals of that nature. Show us about the Jose Williams Fund and how we can get invested in it and uh, make it be even better with each year coming or with Darlene. What, what type of um, business does she have? That we can partake in. Hell, Elsa, the family friend could have came in and, you know, told us what agency she works for. And, and showed herself in a better light. Because, you know, everybody trying to buy a house here and there. You know, could you have shown something like that? Versus all this bullshit. Or uh, where we could get an African or Nigerian, you know, man. So we can, you know, be balling it out and living it up good. And, you know, all this shice and shit. I don't want to see that no more. That's play. That's tap dancing. That's cooning. You know what I'm saying? We don't want that no more. Damn. But that's all I got, y'all. Love y'all. And y'all get down in the comments. Because y'all know I like it when y'all come over to the house. And express y'all opinions and concerns and stuff. And shit. But just let me know when you're coming in. By hitting that doorbell. That's me liking the video now. And coming on in. Get you a plate or whatever you want to do. Some vintage drinks or whatever. And, and, and sharing the videos. And definitely, damn, subscribe to the channel, people. Okay. Let's blow up together, okay? Let's come over here and make some sense of these stories that they're bringing out on, you know, t social media, okay? Because I wanted to do a, a story on this Apple mess where these folks walking off their job because they're saying people coming in, their organization trying to buy products from Apple and they spitting on them. Like, what, 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 what we get as a side? Well, we got to spit on folk, okay? Because we can't get what we want. Don't you know that's assault charge? That's bodily fluids being thrown on somebody else's uh, body that can affect them and get them definitely ill or sick. And, you know, this is like using a gun or a knife or something. Injuring them. You gonna go around spitting on folk? Uh-uh, that's nasty. And that'll get you some paws put on you seriously. And, I mean, they they, they boycotting um, uh, Apple at this time. Trying to make sure that they have equal rights of... Uh, just a good and working environment. Uh, this is a mess. Y'all look it up. It's on Yahoo is when I had um, looked up. Uh, just searching for stuff. Just, you know, really just going through my, you know, timeline. I just thought I'd tell y'all that. And, of course, you know, over is out there, you know, running rampant once again. Because individuals don't want to act right. You don't want to get the shot. You don't want to wear your mask. You don't want to stay away from large gatherings. So that's where we are now. Now I'm not telling anybody to go out there and you know get the shot. Because I know we can get in politics. We can get in religions about why we shouldn't do things. Or just because we don't want to. I understand. Got it good. But we need to comply in some ways. Hey wear your mask. It don't take much to do that. Alright. Stay in smaller gatherings. It don't take much to do that. Okay, I'm off my soap opera box. And I need to go refresh my throat by drinking some more water. And I will see y'all next video, guys. And y'all be blessed. Bye-bye.